Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and welcome to Thoughts On. This is a series where I analyze games and give my opinions on them. Today, we'll be looking at 20 Minutes Till Dawn. 20 Minutes Till Dawn is a game that comes from an emerging genre of games that, to this day, gets argued about what kind of genre these sorts of games are. It all started with Vampire Survivors, a game that involves the character simply moving around the environment, killing things, and picking one of three items that will help form a build, while also making your character stronger. Thanks to its incredibly cheap price, great post content in the form of two DLCs, all while being developed by one person, it has garnered universal acclaim around the world and similar games have been coming into the spotlight, such as Holes of Torment, which is blowing up on Steam right now, presumably due to streamer Asmongold playing the game on Twitch. The game is also incredibly cheap too and has an old school Diablo 1 feel to it, which may be the reason I end up buying it, even though I'm not that old. I've never played the first Diablo before, and I think experiencing it in this sort of genre would be more fitting than the ARPG genre that it's classified as. 20 Minutes Till Dawn is among one of these types of vampire survivor-like games, and doesn't change too much of the formula other than encouraging players to click and use their abilities, and having difficulties to ramp up the game and makes it harder and harder. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? Since the simple premise of this game's story is a person wakes up in a forest and must survive until the sun goes up, I'll just get straight into the meat of this game, which is the gameplay. You pick from one of 12 waifus, though you only have access to Shana when you start, which is the starting waifu. Two of these waifus can be earned by completing the game on two of the game's levels, the Temple and Pumpkin Patch, which limit you to a certain part of the environment as opposed to the game's main location, which is the forest, where you can freely move around and is a recommended map to get the best out of the combat and upgrades. The rest you'll have to earn by obtaining souls, which are gained from killing enemies, as well as the amount of time you survive for. You can also spend these souls on runes, which are persistent upgrades that help you prepare or pre-build before going into a run, and you can only pick one from each row. At first glance, the other rows will be greyed out, so fully upgrading one skill in the row prior will unlock that row and vice versa for the others. Souls can also be spent on weapons, each having their own gimmicks and set of weapon evolutions, which I'll go over later. Any waifu can equip any weapon, so the option is yours in what weapon you decide to use for a run. There's three gamers to choose from, which are Standard, Quick Play, and Endless. A standard run lasts about 20 minutes, as it implies in the name of the game, minus the time you spend looking at every upgrade you get when you level up, which is fairly quick and my go-to gamer when aiming for a run. Quick Play lasts for about half the time, but you level up a lot faster with the exception of achievements not being achievable in this mode. Lastly, you have Endless, which just sees how long you can last in the darkness for. Quick play and Endless are fun, but it can get boring pretty fast, and I tend to play this as a game to either change things up, or just take a break from something else that I'm doing. So that's why I go with Standard every time I play. There's also Darkness levels, which slightly increase the difficulty of the game and make the game more challenging. Each one is earned by completing the game on the previous Darkness level, so if you want to unlock Darkness 8 for an example, you need to complete the game on Darkness 7. This adds a layer of depth to the game and gives players options to make the game harder or not. Some of these modifiers include small enemies spawning more often and dealing more damage, bosses dealing double damage and having more HP, and elites moving faster and dealing more damage. They're all similar to each other, but nothing to worry about since the game will tell you what modifier it is when you select it. They all stack too, so keep that in mind when choosing. If you've played Vampire Survivors or any game like it for that matter, the gameplay is pretty much similar here. You start, you kill enemies, you gain levels, and you pick from one of five upgrades. Rinse, repeat, until the run is over. For the gameplay shown, it's four due to one of the darkness levels giving you one less upgrade to choose from. What makes 20 minutes different aside from its art style, of course, is the ability to fire and use character abilities, should your character have one. You left click to shoot and right click to use your ability. This is a nice change from the just move around and let the game do the work for you type of way you play these games because it encourages you to actually, you know, shoot the enemies. And it feels good to do so thanks to, to the VFX and the sounds that go on when you get later into a run. There's plenty of build variety here too, such as Spark with her elemental build that allows her to shred enemies with all kinds of status effects alongside the dual SMGs, which gives you higher chances to proc and more DPS thanks to its high capacity magazine and fire rate. She also has a passive that lets her shock an enemy on impact, and since it has a 50% chance, makes a guarantee thanks to accounting towards each projectile. You can make a summoner build with Abby using the back gun, which scales with all summoning upgrades that you find, and also gain more summons from upgrades too. Her passive allows her to spin around and shoot her gun in random directions while also maintaining her run speed, making her a fast and mobile character while also dishing out high amounts of damage. 
Speaking of speed, there's two types of speed which are running and walking. Walk speed is how fast you walk when you're firing your weapon and run speed is how fast you run when you're not firing your gun. There are upgrades that boost each of these and it's something to keep in mind when playing as movement speed in this game is essential for success, especially in the higher darkness levels. Another cool build is an all out fire build using Scarlet and the flame cannon together, which helps deal massive amounts of fire damage. Her passive throws a wave of fire out at every third shot, which goes through enemies and is a great means of crowd control. There are many upgrades in 20 minutes till dawn, bursting from summons to fire ray, projectiles, health, shields, and more. You can also combine certain upgrades to create synergies, powerful upgrades that add additional bonuses, such as more elemental damage, bullet damage, explosions, and fire rate. There are also character specific upgrades that are earned by killing elite enemies, which are the small red enemies. On kill, they'll drop a chest that when picked up, give you a random skill out of the three that are available for the waifu that you're playing. Five if you're playing Shana, because she has an upgrade that involves picking up these halo pieces, which form a halo that grants her massive buffs. These can lead to a massive power spike, making your run exceptionally easier. Next, we have Tomes, which are dropped from the main bosses of the game. They provide great power on top of character upgrades, but can give you downsides too, such as the Tome of Rage, which gives you fire rate, spread, and triple your magazine size at the cost of bullet damage and knockback. These negatives can be offset if you spec into the right upgrades prior, but can be a detriment if chosen incorrectly. Lastly, we have Weapon Evolutions. These are earned upon reaching level 20, and you pick from one of three options given to you, each providing their own gimmicks and boosts to help flesh out the build you're going for. My favorite evolution is Flash Mag for the dual SMGs, which turns Spark into an absolute machine, providing you have some lightning upgrades to make it so that you never run out of ammo. It's pretty nuts and can be hectic to the point where you can't see what the hell is going on in your screen. Which leads me to my next and final complaint, VFX Clutter. Now look, I'm not going to go around and say that you can't see anything at all when you reach the late game because you indeed can. I just think at times it can get a bit ridiculous and there should be an option to turn VFX off or just lower the settings for those that don't want it. But the game does heavily advertise it in its trailers, so I can't blame Flan, sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly, for not removing it if he doesn't want to remove it. But a simple setting would go a long way to help with visibility, especially for those endless runs. Enemies are pretty standard in this game. You've got your melee enemies and your range enemies. The elite enemies aren't anything special and the bosses are good too. But the one boss I have a complaint about is the first boss at the 15 minute mark, which is Shub, also known as Dashy Boy. This only applies to Darkness 15 though, as I think the boss is pretty solid for the most part. But on D15, he becomes a whole nother beast, since bosses can attack 80% more often, which I despise because that means he can dash more, and more dashes means more of him going all over the place. I find it to be unfair in that if you don't have any frost or movement speed upgrades, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage and will most likely cost you your run for not having it, which sucks because it feels like it's a requirement just to be able to kill him. Every boss that comes after is fine and doesn't pose much of a challenge. Look, this could be just a skill issue from me and maybe I suck, but without freeze or movement speed, 90% of the time Sharp will just outright own you and send you back to the menu screen. I don't really know how you can balance this aside from changing the way he attacks or possibly giving him a second or two to breathe after dashing a few times so you can catch his breath. That way players can unload some damage into him before he goes at it again, while also giving time to reposition if need be. Graphically and visually, the game looks, runs, and feels great. It's a Lovecraftian pixel art game, a subgenre that doesn't get used enough these days which combines horror and weird fiction together. And I think it meshes really well here, especially with the forest. The color theme of the characters resembles the game's universe and premise of trying to survive, killing anything and everything that gets in their way and the forces of evil that surround the forest appear as nothing at first until you step right in. Oh, and don't even get me started on those freaking trees. They appear as still objects at first, but shoot them enough and they'll wake up in anger and frustration, wanting to kill you. They're also incredibly beefy and could serve as mini bosses of their own, even if they walk so bloody slow. Regardless, I think the game looks awesome, and I can't wait to see what Flan does in the future if he has plans to make DLC and release post-patch content for the game. I played the game with the in-game music turned off, as I'm never a fan of playing these games with the game's music since it isn't a primary focus. But after listening to one of the game's tracks, I gotta say, it's pretty catchy. Other people in the YouTube comments felt the same way too. Having preset volume options instead of specific adjustments is a bit annoying as everyone has different audio setups and preferences. Simply adding in sliders for these would allow for every player to adjust the volume to their liking. 
I also recommend turning the camera shake off as it helps with visibility and makes the late game feel a lot smoother. 20 Minutes Till Dawn is a great alternative to Vampire Survivors and has lots going for it in terms of replayability and fun. I'm currently going for all the achievements as I'm recording this video to keep myself occupied on it for a time and then I'll probably move on to something else. I've been wanting to check another game of this kind for a while now which is Brotato as it just went out of early access so I may give that a try next. I've always considered these games time wasters or time killers, but you can play them like a normal game too, just don't expect it to get interesting after a 5 hour play session. The game is also cheap so you definitely get bang for your buck here. I highly recommend 20 minutes till dawn if you want a game that's short, fun and frantic to play through. As always, I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.